Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy retiring. Thank God. We're going to talk about it today. I'll issue a challenge and encouragement to President Trump, and we're going to take a look at the comedy coming from the left-wing God-haters. It's not comedy, it's tragedy. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to the program, friend. You're not going to want to miss any of this show. In the next segment, I'm going to read some tweets to you from the left-wingers who are coming unhinged because Anthony Kennedy is opening up yet another spot for President Trump to fill on the Supreme Court. But before we, we go there, I'm thrilled. And I hope that President Trump picks a great pro-life jurist. But I've been around long enough to remember when President Reagan appointed Sandra Day O'Connor and Anthony Kennedy. And when Bush the Elder appointed David Souter. We were told that these justices were pro-life. We were told, we were assured. I remember Sununu, Chief of Staff Sununu, going on television saying this is a home run, assuring Bob Dornan privately that this was a great pick. All of these justices supported Roe. They affirmed Roe in the, in the Planned Parenthood versus Casey decision that came out in 1989. If my memory is correct, 89, it might have been 90. So we, we, as thrilled as I am that President Trump gets to make the pick, we've been down this path before. President Reagan, who is one of my heroes, messed up. President Bush messed up. And if you look at the left wing, when you see President Clinton appointing someone, they would ask the justices on the stand, do you support Roe? They would vet the justices. Roe versus Wade is the Supreme Court decision that forcefully brought child killing to this country, a judicial fiat, a judicial putsch, a revolution, an insurrection, a palace coup, whatever you want to call it. It had no basis in American law. So you better believe that President Clinton and President Obama when they were appointing justices, made sure that they would vote to uphold Roe. Yet we're told that a Republican president should never ask a potential judicial candidate whether or not he supports Roe. Nonsense. Just ask, will you vote to overturn Roe? Yes or no? Because if the answer is no, then you can't be on the Supreme Court. It's just that simple. If you won't vote to overturn Roe, you, you're disqualified. Let's go back to Kennedy. Kennedy is a wretched jurist. He is a treacherous Catholic. This man is an evildoer of the highest order. And you have to remember something about evildoers. Think of Judas. Most of us, when we think of Judas Iscariot, we are picturing him committing suicide. We're picturing him with the money bag at the Last Supper. But he traveled for three years with the Lord. He was doing miracles. He was casting out demons. The Bible says it, that all of the apostles, that would include Judas. He was sitting around the campfire laughing with the other apostles, joking with the Lord, listening to the Lord. Yes, there was something also going on in his heart that was evil, but our thoughts about Judas are around the last 24 hours of his life, okay? We don't think in terms of he looked like the apostles. He walked like the apostles. He sounded like the apostles. He was an apostle. And Justice Kennedy and so many other evildoers and, and monstrous workers of iniquity, they're well-dressed. They're well-spoken. They're very articulate. They're reasonable. They smile. They've got just a nice, they're, nice affable way about them. And they're evil. They're demon-possessed. They're treacherous. They're brutal. They're unfaithful. That's what Kennedy has been. The, the, the Bible teaches that there are four sins that cry out to God for vengeance, okay? The first two, the shedding of innocent blood and sodomy, homosexual behavior, right? That's what the scriptures teach. It's what the church has held for centuries, okay? These are sins that cry out to God for vengeance. And God warns that nations will be judged. You see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. 
You see what happened to the nations that Israel displaced. The blood was crying from the ground and God judged them. If you look at the shedding of innocent blood in America, if you look at this abominable thing called homosexual marriage, you can trace it in large part right to Anthony Kennedy, a professing Catholic who committed open insurrection and rebellion against God and the Catholic Church by upholding Roe versus Wade and by creating out of thin air an atrocity that even the Greeks, the pagan Greeks, who were often homosexuals and pedophiles, even they could not have conceived of two men being married. What is it? It's absurd. That's the kind of man he is. So I'm listening to people, you know, conservative broadcasters saying, well, you know, he, was a, he wasn't a good guy. He was a bad guy. Okay, great. He upheld the Muslim ban, which we discussed. Great. Broken clock is right twice a day. But on the two things that uh, the travel ban from the seven Muslim nations, right? He, on the two things that matter for the survival of our country, he was treacherous. He betrayed God. He betrayed innocent babies. He betrayed the laws of God. And his hands are covered with blood. And should the day come when the courts of heaven decreed judgment against this country and against the leaders who brought us to this judgment, I would be betting dollars to donuts that Justice Kennedy's got a front row seat in the guilty defendant's box. And his Supreme Court decisions and his Supreme Court written opinions are not going to be there for the courts of heaven to ooh and ah. Those written opinions are going to be there as witnesses against his immortal soul. God help President Trump to get a good replacement that will overturn Roe. Please, Lord, if that happens, President Trump is going to go down as one of the greatest presidents America has ever had, in spite of how the left is coming unglued. When we come back, I'm going to put some tweets up from the left. Use it as a teaching moment. These people are crazy, and they're just not intelligent. They're just not intelligent. Don't go away. Warrior Guitars. Without question, the best guitar I've ever played, heard, or seen is a Warrior. The owner of Warrior, Jay Drand, has an incredible testimony of redemption and healing. God gave him the vision to start Warrior Guitars and a passion to make the best guitars in the world. They only make about 120 guitars a year, each one by hand. Maybe one of them could be yours or a once in a lifetime gift for someone you love. The one thing that I can tell you is this is the most finely crafted guitar I have ever held. I've played a lot of guitars, I own a lot of guitars, and although the quality is exceptional on all of them, this is by far the most finely crafted instrument I own or have ever played. And I'm glad I own it. Contact my friends at Warrior Guitar. Tell them Randall Terry sent you. Welcome back to the program, friend. The Daily Caller put together a montage of tweets coming from those bemoaning the fact that Justice Kennedy is resigning. Some of them we can't put up. They're so full of expletives, we just can't put them up. But some of these we can, and we'll use it as a teaching moment. Here's one that's interesting. For starters, abortion rights are more imperiled now than at any time since Roe versus Wade, and there's no reason to think there won't be a rollback on gay rights either with Kennedy gone. This may come as a shock to you, Andy, but can I call you Andy? There's no right to kill your offspring. There's no right, you wretched, wretched man. You don't have a right to kill a baby. No one does. And there's no such thing as a right to homosexual marriage. Something that is an intrinsic evil cannot be a right. By the way, on point of theology, friends, God gave us free will. We have the ability to commit acts of evil, including heinous crimes like murder, but we don't have a right to do it. Never confuse that. The ability and the right are not the same thing. All right, here's one from someone you'd expect, Reverend Al Sharpton. We have no choice but to organize, strategize, vote and act. Ambivalent attitudes are not an option. All civil rights and human rights are at stake. What side are you on? 
<laughs> Come on, Reverend Al. All human rights, all civil rights, everything, the right to free speech, the right to freedom of the religion, freedom, I mean, the right to freedom of press, Al? Come on. All human rights are in jeopardy? This is law, this is laughable. Whose side do you got? They're not, they're gonna have trouble getting people whipped up over this, by the way. Really and truly, what rights are we talking about that are imperiled here? President Trump is fighting for Americans. He's standing up for babies. He's not even taking a public position on against homosexual marriage. During the election, to his discredit, he said that the Obergefell decision that so that legalized, so-called legalized homosexual marriage, he said, well, it's the law of the land or some dumb thing. So I'm not, you know, I'm not worried for the homosexual rights people because Kennedy is gone. But there is no such thing, all right? And and to say that all civil and human rights are at stake is just laughable. Here's one. This is great. From Thor Benson. As a member of the LGBTQ community, they're adding, they keep adding letters, Justice Kennedy being replaced threatens my rights. It also threatens the rights of minorities, women, and Muslims. Trump must not be allowed to replace him before November. Let the people speak first. All right. You do understand that the people spoke when they elected Trump. And you do understand that the Supreme Court is not the people speaking. It's almost laughable when you think about it, that the, 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 the core of the evils that have helped destroy this country, child killing, so-called homosexual marriage, taking the Bible out of public schools, taking prayer out of public schools, the decriminalization of birth controls that are abortifacients, the decriminalization of pornography, forced busing, all of these things came from the courts. All of them. That's what we're dealing with, people, an out-of-control, godless judiciary that we're not a free people. And we don't govern ourselves. We are ruled by nine people in white and black robes. All right, let's continue. Molly Knight, this is a riot. Molly, you need to take some kind of medication, sweetie. How very cool of Justice Kennedy to pour kerosene on the current dumpster fire that is America. The Roe versus Wade riots should provide fine entertainment for him in his retirement. <laughs> Molly, Molly, are you really going to riot? Here's my recommendation. Take a cue from the Black Lives Matter people up in Ferguson, Missouri. What did they do? They rioted and they went... Mm. Tragically, they went and they burned down and destroyed black businesses. All right, that's bizarre. Don't you think that's bizarre? But maybe Molly could take a cue from their bizarreness and she could have her riots at Planned Parenthood and at abortion mills and set them on fire and burn the abortion mills to the ground. Molly, you might want to consider that as an option for your riots, your Roe versus Wade riots, you pathetic little girl. All right, I got to skip that one. Too many expletives. Um, we may just have left the point at which we could rely on democratic norms to fix our government and are now on the road to literal revolution from Elaine Atwell. Oh, Elaine, do you even know how to fire a gun, honey? Do you know what the Second Amendment is for? Do you, do you ever go to target practice? Do you ever go to a gun range? Because you don't strike me as the kind of person that wouldn't even know how to use a firearm and have been properly trained in one. So what are you talking about? But what's even funnier about this, and this is why I say they're just not intelligent people. Elaine, you're not, you're, you're, you're just not, you're just not that smart, sweetie. Listen, democratic norms are not how we got in this mess. You don't have a democratic norm that brought you child killing. You have a judicial tyranny, the group of judicial tyrants. You don't have a democratic norm that brought you homosexual marriage. When democracy was working, 37 of the states outright banned same gender matrimony, outright banned it, either statutorily or in their state constitution, including California, okay? So we don't have democratic norms that brought us all of the things that you treasure. We have tyranny. You don't want democratic norms, Elaine. You want tyranny. You want bullies to rule the rest of us so that you can get your pathetic little way. 
I've got to take a break. Uh, all right. I will be right back. We'll talk about some more of this. But I hope that some of you folks that are the, the tweeters, I hope that you get this message. And I hope that you have just the shred of ability to feel ashamed and embarrassed at your flat out stupidity. And if you don't have the intelligence or the shame, stay with me. I'll teach you. Have Muslim terrorists hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam? Or is there more to the story? The answer lies in the life of one man, Muhammad, the founder of Islam. Muslim terrorists see themselves inside a 1,400-year-old story, a narrative that focuses on specific events in the life of Muhammad. We are going to look at Muhammad's life using their most sacred literature. We will look at Muhammad at the Battle of Badr. We'll see him deal with those who mock him. We'll see the times when he used deception. We'll witness Muhammad's anti-Semitism. And yes, we will discuss Muhammad and his teachings concerning sex, slavery, and jihad. Friend, if you want to understand Islamic terrorism, get this series today. Welcome back to the broadcast, friend. I'm going to go for two more tweets and then challenge my Christian viewers. Here's one from Mark Joseph Stern. Justice Kennedy's retirement is a catastrophe for liberals. Abortion access, same-sex marriage, voting rights, environmental regulations, they're all on the line now. This is nothing short of a crisis for the left. <laughs> right, because somebody who President Trump picks is going to take away people's right to vote. Yes, he's probably going to lock you up. It's a crisis for the left. It is a crisis for the left. Because the left can't function without judicial tyranny. They could never, ever, ever have brought about their agenda without tyrants and the barrel of a gun. Do you understand, people? I don't think that they have the capacity to look themselves in the mirror and say, yeah, if, if I had to have a revolution so that I, if I had to kill people to make sure that I could kill my babies and that I could have this hedonistic, godless, homosexual lifestyle, I would do it. I don't think that they, the one the guy said revolution. So he's willing to kill people to sustain these rights. God help us. God, they're, no, they're all on the line now. I don't think voting rights are on the line. And I think that, you know, environmental issues on the line, what does that even mean? Environmental regulations? Because President Trump wants to put in a pipeline to bring us gas and oil from Canada to Texas because he wants to drill in Anwar and, and make us energy independent so we're not paying for Muslim oil and then they use the money to blow up our people in terrorist attacks, funded with oil money that we spent in America? I don't even get it. That's th These people are not intelligent. I hope that you're getting that now, people. Here's one from Ian, Sam it's Ian Samuel. He's trying to be really profound. Ian, I love you. The crisis, my brothers and sisters, is here. The crisis has come. Ian, go smoke another joint, buddy. Go have, go do whatever it is that you're doing that makes you feel puffed up and intelligent and profound, and you're able to reduce this to one great sense. What's the crisis, Ian? Really and truly, what's the crisis? Killing babies? Is that what you want? You want homosexual marriage? I mean, you want Muslims uh, to just be able to come in? Terrorists? No way of, of uh, vetting who they are in these seven countries? Is that, that what you want? I mean, what do you want, man? You're, you're just, you're embarrassing yourself and you don't even see it. That's the funny part about people who are in a fortress that has a wall of ignorance and then a moat of arrogance. It's impenetrable. It's impenetrable. So Christian brothers and sisters, you have to understand that the reason that this country is in the mess that it's in is because of the judiciary. There's no question, but I'm going to go a step further than that. It's because of silence and cowardice and retreatism in Christian clergy. Roman Catholic, evangelical, mainline Protestant denominations, Presbyterians of all ilks, either cowardice or outright treachery. 
There's a, there's a lot of them that have just turned away now. They're supporting child killing. They're supporting homosexual marriage. But <clears throat> the sins of silence, the sins of omission, what we have failed to do, that is why we're in the mess that we're in. If Roman Catholic bishops and evangelical superstars, Billy Graham and company, in the early 1970s, the late 1960s, had stood up and said, we will not tolerate child killing in this country. We demand the impeachment of the seven justices who just voted for Roe versus Wade. If they had resorted to nonviolent protest or even, dare I say it, to the use of force, not against people, but against facilities, buildings, we wouldn't have child killing today. We would not have child killing today. People like Mitch McConnell, the, the Senate Majority Leader, he doesn't want to end child killing. He's a, he's a Judas, all right? But it's the fine people, the beautiful Christians of Kentucky that keep electing him and sending him there that bear a certain weight of responsibility as to why he is in a position to betray us. Are you hearing me? So Christian brothers and sisters, those especially in the evangelical world who have been told since they were little people that politics is of the devil, I'm called to preach the gospel, Jesus is not involved in political issues, he's neither Republican nor Democrat. We hear all these little catchphrases, my kingdom is not of this world. They pave the way with spiritual sounding phrases and out of context Bible verses for Christians to abandon the public square. But God never intended for us to abandon the public square. The murder that's going on, the shedding of innocent blood, in part, can be traced directly back, not just to Anthony Kennedy, but to Christian clergy who failed in their duty to do as the Bible says, to defend the fatherless, to cry out for justice, to appoint elders in the gates who love justice and hate iniquity and hate bribes. I've got to, I've got to take a break. I'll be right back. What would Mohammed do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Muhammad and Islam. How do I know? Because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Muhammad do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700 or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Warrior Guitars. Without question, the best guitar I've ever played, heard, or seen is a Warrior. The owner of Warrior, Jay Dran, has an incredible testimony of redemption and healing. God gave him the vision to start Warrior Guitars and a passion to make the best guitars in the world. They only make about 120 guitars a year, each one by hand. Maybe one of them could be yours or a once in a lifetime gift for someone you love. The one thing that I can tell you is this is the most finely crafted guitar I have ever held. I've played a lot of guitars, I own a lot of guitars, and although the quality is exceptional on all of them, this is by far the most finely crafted instrument I own or have ever played. And I'm glad I own it. Contact my friends at Warrior Guitar. Tell them Randall Terry sent you. Welcome back, friend. On another matter, we are on the cusp of releasing our new hour and a half documentary called Muhammad in His Own Words. No one in any English-speaking country or in any European country has ever released a movie about the life of Muhammad using Muhammad's own words as the foundation for the movie. And as you watch the movie, you realize, oh my goodness, Muslim terrorists are simply imitating Muhammad's example and obeying his orders. But we do it really politely with ancient Islamic art that proves the point of what Muhammad did and said. I need your help. Go to my website, randallterry.com, and pre-order the DVD. Would you do that, please, whether it's one DVD or six or a hundred? We need $500 and $1,000 gifts, $50 and $100 gifts. 
go to my website, please, or call the number on your screen and say, I wanna help Randall release this movie. Put in your order and we're gonna get him duplicated and get him to you right away. And pray for us. God bless you.